Hello everybody, this is Zero Sum Survival, and this is what will be my first video review of a field tested knife, the Fox Knives Paris. Now, I just wanted to let you guys know that I've, uh, I've watched a lot of knife videos, and I guess at some point I was prompted to make my own because a lot of the videos either weren't in English or they just simply didn't answer all the questions that I felt I needed to have answered before I made a, a purchase in a new knife. Uh, but that being said, I do want to give a shout out to Francis over at Bush Camping Tools, who has really inspired me over the last year or so watching his videos to uh, branch out and make my own. So Francis, thanks a lot for uh, your videos and keep them coming. So this knife review might be a little different than than some of the reviews that you've seen for knives. I personally like to take the knife and handle it for quite a while uh, to get a lot of information about how the knife feels, how it performs, uh, that you don't typically get after just a day or even a week out of the box. So uh, that being said, I field tested the Fox Knives Paris, which is uh, this right here. And I tested this for nearly a five week period. Now, when I say I tested it, I tested it everywhere. I tested it in my kitchen, cutting food. I tested it in the backyard, uh, cutting up wood for the fire pit. I spent a lot of days out in the bush, you can see here, and uh, some overnighters. Now, I kept this knife outside every day for five weeks, and it rained probably 30% of the time in the sheath and days that it didn't rain, I went out and I threw water on it. And uh, just simply because I wanted to, to get a good feel of, of the corrosion resistance that this N690CO uh, steel has. It's a stainless, but I wanted to see exactly how stainless it was. So <clears throat> I tested this knife extensively in, in all tasks and when the knife was wet, when the conditions were wet, when the knife was dry, when the conditions were dry, with and without gloves. I also wore the sheath in as many configurations as possible so that uh, I could get a feel for the, the ease of access and just fastening and uh, unfastening the thumb snaps, both in right and left hand configuration. So uh, with that being said, I hope you uh, enjoy the video. Hey, so this video is going to be specifically dealing with the performance of the knife in the field. If you want more information about the actual technical specs on the knife, head over to my YouTube channel and check out my initial out-of-box review of the Fox Knives Paris or Parus. Thanks. Okay, so let's get started. So everyone has a different set of, of methodologies or or procedures that, that they like to go through to sort of test um, the quality of a knife and I'm no different. I have what I like to call my five F's uh, when it comes to a bushcraft or a survival knife. So the first F is foraging supplies and that's specifically for, for food, fire, and building materials and it's typically tasks that involve chopping, cutting, prying, and boring. And then second is my fire building. That's the second F. That involves splitting, as in batoning, whittling, feather sticks, scraping, and then the use of a ferro rod. The third F is food preparation, which involves planing a work surface, and slicing, uh, slicing veg or whatever, skinning, dressing game, and then filleting fish. The fourth is fending, fending off attacks. How good is the knife? Uh, when it comes to stabbing and slashing and self-defense. And then the last is, the last F, number five, is field maintainability. And that basically deals with ease of sharpening, disassembly, reassembly, and maintenance of the knife against corrosion wear resistance in the field. Yeah, so here we go. I mean, as you can see from the knife design, this knife was built to chop, and it chops with no problem. Um, it's actually quite fun to use as a chopper. I've got much larger knives that don't cut uh, this quickly uh, through wood this size. I mean, just like hot butter.
I quite enjoyed uh, the chopping portion of, of the field evaluation. And on dry seasoned wood, it, it still makes short work of it. No problems in the chopping department. The only thing that I, I would say um, is that as you get to bigger pieces, you invariably end up using the recurve portion. And I gave it a test here, and it, it's, the recurve isn't suited for chopping. So um, I would stick to the, the front belly of the blade. The tip, however, is another thing. This, this knife has a beast of a tip. This is seasoned oak that, uh, that I'm tearing into with no problem. And I, I probably did a half a dozen digging and prying tests. And the, the tip performs beautifully. Here I decided to give a go on the edge, uh, do some scraping, and really put a lot of lateral torsion on the edge. I wanted to see if, if the blade edge would roll, or, but it, it, it didn't. Um, I did both the recurve and you can see the belly. It makes quite good shavings for, for tender, for fire starting, um, but the edge held up on both portions of the blade. It, it is a really, really strongly tempered edge. And of course now you're moving to, to the tip and uh, more lateral torsion. Uh, this is uh, seasoned maple that uh, I cut down last year. It's really nice and dry as you can tell. And uh, the edge again, just just twisting and, and boring into that. You know, if you're if you're digging for grubs or if you're digging for uh, trying to get some fat wood, uh, you're going to want to to know that you can use the tip for these types of tasks without worrying about snapping the tip. I cannot see how a person, even working vigorously with the tip, could, could snap it. Um, I was quite pleased with it. Uh, batoning, absolutely no problem, especially when using uh, the recurve section of the blade. I did split some larger six inch, which I don't have on this film. Um, I didn't video it, but I was splitting some six inch maple and uh, because of the, the, the variable uh, blade thickness um, that occurs, you, you do get a little trouble trying to drive the front end down because it's a bit thicker than the recurve. But that recurve really lends itself. Here I'm, I'm feather sticking, and, and there, I, it took me a couple times because of that curvilinear edge. Um, I kept wanting to roll the edge out and it, uh, before I got to the end of the stroke, so it would clip off the feathers a bit prematurely. It just took a little bit of of getting used to. Um, and then, of course, uh, the spine works absolutely great. I made dozens of fires. Uh, used both the finger choil and the jimping on the back with no problem. As far as uh, planing goes, if you're trying to build yourself a food prep surface, um, the smaller the diameter of, of the, the piece of wood that you're using uh, to, or prepping for, for your food cutting surface, uh, you're going to find the better because with that recurve, uh, there's no real sustained flat edge on that knife. So here, uh, I'm, I'm working the recurve, but at some point you hit the terminal width on which that recurve will make a, a flat plane. And uh, so you're quite limited in, in that regard. But, you know, in a survival situation, uh, you can really just make do with what you've got. Um, Oh, the knife, for as thick as it is, it it really cuts. Uh, it cuts really well. Um, part of uh, you know your food prep would include skinning and filleting. Um, I don't have uh, any videos. I didn't. I didn't fillet any fish or, or dress any game uh, for this review. Uh, but you know, I'm, I can tell you that it would probably do it with no problem. Okay, so given how well the knife cut something simple like a tomato, I wanted to uh, take the opportunity to demonstrate how well it cuts with uh, something or cuts on something like rope. Um, the, given the unusual shape of the blade, as you can tell, 
you don't have a lot of surface cutting area on the edge that you can use. It just simply won't work. So you're forced to use the, the tip or the belly to do your cutting. And uh, I've cut a lot of rope uh, with this knife. Um, but in my experience, I find that natural fiber rope, whether it be manila or sisal or jute or uh, hemp, uh, when soaking wet is actually a lot stronger and uh, it gives a little bit more resistance to being cut. So I, I soaked a, a, a length of quarter inch sisal and it ended up expanding to nearly half an inch in diameter. So uh, what you see here is I'm, I'm cutting the sisal with the belly. Now uh, because of the limited cutting edge that you have on the knife for flat surface cutting like this, um, you know, you're going to dull that edge, that part of the edge, sooner. So while cutting this rope, and uh, I even I cut a length of this that was uh, that I froze. Um, I, I actually discovered that there's a technique to it, and that technique is basically uh, that if you run that belly over the edge of the rope, you can grab it um, on the portion of the blade that I I refer to as the belly tooth. And if, if you see here, it's that portion right where that secondary plunge line is. You just run it over ahead of it, and then it catches on your reverse draw, and it seems to cut the rope a lot quicker. I found this to be the case in a lot of the cutting tasks with this knife. So whereas I originally thought the, uh, the recurve may have been a hindrance, it actually affords a bit more purchase in some of the, the material that you are cutting into. Now, I know a lot of you guys are probably interested in how well the knife does in the food prep category and other areas. So I thought I would demonstrate with a coconut. You can go to your local store and get a coconut. And when you do, most all of them have what looks like a face on the bottom. As you can see here, you've got two dark eyes and a lighter colored mouth. Now that mouth is where you want to insert the tip of your knife and uh, bore and pry you can actually break through to the uh, coconut milk on the inside and you'll hear it decompress like you would a can of pop when you reach that area. Now, once you actually break through, uh, and you can see here I'm cleaning and trying to prevent getting some of the coconut shell into the milk, but once you break through you can either drink it or you can uh, save it for later for cooking. Now there are a lot of different methodologies out there uh, on YouTube and on the internet as to how to process or get into a coconut and um, I'm just going to show you what I find to be the easiest way to do it. Um, now obviously this is a coconut that's been husked um, but uh, typically after you get to this point this is what you do. So looking at where the mouth is on this, you're going to go straight up between the eyes up to what would be the center of the head. And I use the spine to give it one good whack. And as you can see, it almost 99% of the time works perfectly. You might have to give it just another twist or tug to break it in half. But what you end up with is you end up with uh, practically two perfect halves of a coconut. So in addition to showing you another trick about uh, cooking with a coconut, I also want to take the opportunity to demonstrate uh, opening up a can with your knife. Now again, in a survival situation, if your knife is the only tool that you have, then you're going to use it uh, as you need to. And it, it's actually quite possible that you could end up in a situation where you have canned foods and uh, you the only means of opening that you have is your knife. Uh, I prefer to use a blade out uh, technique as to minimize the risk of slipping and cutting myself. And uh, in this instance, I'm I have a can of, of pineapples, but it could be anything. So once you have opened up your can, if you've got a coconut, uh, you can obviously use the can for cooking. Uh, but you can also, uh, with a coconut, whether it be canned food or even fresh game, because the you know as long as you have uh, something you can fit into the coconut. Um, you can add the contents into one half of the coconut. I'm going to just change over some of the juice. Um, 
but if all you had were pieces of meat or vegetables, you could actually replace some of uh, the coconut milk in to kind of create a broth. And the top that you took off makes the, a perfect fitting cap, uh, as well as having a hole in the top to act as a vent. And you can just set this down into the fire and the embers, and by the end of uh, 20 or 30 minutes, you'll have a great little tasty treat. So how easy is it to sharpen, I guess you guys are asking. Well, I personally prefer the Camillus Glide. I find it's pretty easy. Um, I make use of the ceramic rod that's on the edge. And with a little practice, it doesn't take long to be able to uh, hone or resharpen both the recurve portion of the blade uh, or the belly. It's, it's actually, it's quite simple. And an added advantage to having uh, the Camillus Glide is that you can use the number 10 Torx bit on the end to take the handle bolts out if you wanted to disassemble the knife. So let's just take one last look at the knife. As you can see, the Cerakote coating uh, stayed pretty much intact except for some of the high wear areas after five weeks of use. Okay, yeah, so I guess what I think we should do here is just really quickly run through uh, the highlights of the pros and the cons. You saw how the knife performed uh, in the video, and so some of the things I just want to touch on, and this is just hitting the high points, is that for the pros, that, and there are a lot of pros, but, but these are the things that I feel really stand out with this, with this knife. Uh, to begin with, your, the generous finger choil and the extended jimping uh, really quickly turned this knife uh, from a blade heavy chopper into a shortened balanced knife suited for finer tasks which is if you're a one knife guy that's that's what you really need uh, this sturdy blade design and including an extremely robust tip uh, eliminates any fears when working with the point the swage or swedge as you guys some of you guys like to call it um, is tapered enough so that you can take on some of the more repetitive light topping tasks, such as delimbing deadfall for your daily fire fuel, um, and that helps uh, preserve the cutting edge. Anything that you can use the swage for um, will definitely save your cutting edge, especially if you're out in it in a situation where you don't have a means to resharpen or hone the cutting edge of your knife. And then the sheath. I absolutely love the sheath fox. Stick with this sheath for all of your models, um, except for one, I won't say tragic flaw, but it's kind of a kind of a, a big deal, I guess, if you want to wear, uh, make use of the, the molly or the pals webbing on the back, but we'll go over that. Other than that, the sheath is brilliant. I love it. So let's get to the cons. And again, maybe I'm nitpicking, but I felt that they were um, significant enough just to mention. So batoning hardwood that that is thicker or larger in diameter than the recurve section of the knife presented a little problems and that's just because past this secondary plunge line you get differentiating blade thicknesses which made it a little difficult for the front end to be driven but this portion no problem and maybe i know you guys are saying you shouldn't baton probably would to begin with but we're talking about a survival situation if this is your only cutting edge and you need to get to dry wood uh, you're probably going to have to do it uh, the other thing would be uh, the recurve also, it, it limits how much of an area that you can plane on, let's say, a fallen trunk. If you're going to prepare a flat surface for food prep, it, you can't really get much out of a curvilinear blade. That's just what it is. The Another con, and, and this is, again, me nitpicking, is that the handle is absolutely four preen. I love four preen. This handle is brilliant in some grips, but then if you go to digging or prying uh, or stabbing uh, rigorously, it feels better with gloves. I'll just put it that way. Uh, but again, I'm a nitpicker. And then the last thing, and this is probably the thing that aggravates me the most, is that the POW webbing, as it's designed, on the back does not really accommodate 
uh, a two by two anchor hold on the the pack that you're trying to attach this to. And what I mean by that is that you can they've put these two uh, on the back of the sheath, uh, thereby only allowing one strap coming off your pack, which makes it very wobbly. Otherwise, you can run this through two straps like this that are on the pack and you eliminate the use of those altogether, which then you're not using Powell's webbing. You're just running this through two straps. So I think they need to go back and take a look at this. A single one here would have given this is a point of anchor, this is a point of anchor, and this is a point of anchor. So you would have had three on the sheath side and two on the pack side, which would have been five anchor points. But the most you're going to get using the webbing is just one on each side. And that's, that's again, maybe just a design oversight. But other than that, um, I love this sheath. I really do. So in summary, I mean, I think this knife does everything that you could want from a survival knife. And it does most of it with ease. Um, it's being marketed as a survival knife. And it more than easily performs as one. It wouldn't be my first choice for bushcraft, and that's simply because the, the variable jade, uh, blade geometry doesn't necessarily lend itself as well to some outdoor tasks as, as well as like a smaller, slimmer, straight-edged regular blade would. But, I mean, hey, the, the, you have to admit, this is awesome to look at, and it's actually really fun to use. And I would definitely recommend this knife to anyone with, let's say, intermediate to advanced experience working with knives in the wild, because I think you would enjoy its heft and its feel. And obviously, I would recommend this to anyone looking to add an extremely unusual and aggressive looking designed knife to their collection. So, final verdict, I give it a thumbs up. I really do. Uh, there was times when I really tried to not like the knife uh, because of its unconventional blade design, but it's a workhorse. It really is. It's really surprised me, and I actually enjoy using it. Uh, so, there you go. The Fox Knives Paris. Uh, go out and get you one. This is Zero Sum Survival. I hope you enjoyed the video, and stick around for more. And I'll see you in the wild.